The following program contains coarse language. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. I'm your host, G, and with me is the very sick Vass. What's up? Oh, you are super sick. Anthony's sick and didn't show up. You're sick. You didn't even mention anything in the chat, and you showed up. No, because I'm not a pussy. Oh, snap. (laughs) I went there. Oh, snap. Yeah, I was sick last week. And I still have the sniffles. So if you're listening and you're, you know, hearing some sniffles, it's not because we're crying. It's just because we're getting and over a cold. And not because of drugs either. And not because of drugs either. Yeah, just a whole table full of cocaine. Can you imagine? Yeah, that'd be a lot. I don't much. think that'll work now that we're recording some of these for clip release. Nope. Um, yeah, aside from your sickness, how's it going? Oh, not bad. It's been a rainy week. Dude, it's fucking freezing. I'm wearing my toque. Not that that would stop me because oh, yeah. I have worn my toque in the, the summer. Yeah. yeah. It's like that joke. Well, that's just a fashion statement at that point. Or at least attempting at one. It's like that joke that Stewie does to, uh, um, what's it called? Fucking hell. That Stewie does to Colin Farrell. Mm. Like, hey, hey, Colin Farrell, you wearing that toque? It's the middle of the summer. Hey, he doesn't really get, wear toques, getting, right? Getting a little bit warm out there. Getting, getting, feeling, feeling cold. You need to toke out in the middle of the summer? Something along that line. Yeah. I kind of screwed it up, but uh, that's the way she goes. Um, I recorded, a, remember Robert Bailey? Yeah. Yeah, me and Robert recorded a deep dive. Oh, we got wow. two and a half hours. Of? A, I, I'm calling it Life and Hip Hop. Okay. Because yeah. we talked about hip hop. Because he's he's one of those guys that he likes his underground stuff. Okay. And once it goes mainstream, I don't think he likes it anymore. <laughs> He's really protective of like okay. at least that aspect of it. He also has a sneaker collection, two hundred and fifty sneakers, dude. Oh wow. Not a word no word of a lie. It's insane. Anything like from like Jordans to like Vans, that kind Mostly of thing. Mostly it's just Jordans, Adidas, and Nikes. Oh, okay. So even basketball, like Jordans basketball. Are, kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. If you go to the Bert Bailey, mm-hmm. like B E R T Bailey, yeah. you could find his Instagram account as he's got pictures of his shoes. It's sweet. That's wild. He's got a full room in his basement now. Hmm. But anyways, we did a deep dive. We talked about some hip hop stuff. Um, and then we went into life and it was, it went deep. It went crazy. Oh. After a couple of glasses of this, uh, Glenn Morangy scotch, we opened up a little bit. Mm-hmm. The, uh, I, keep, I keep saying the Saskatchewan podcast network. The oh. Saskatchewan podcast network has us, the F word podcast in their midst. And by midst, I mean on their website, we are a part of the Saskatchewan podcast network. If you're just tuning into us for the first time now. Um, I'm quickly going to start calling our show one of the best shows no one will ever hear of. Oh, yeah, fair enough. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But anyways, yes, we are a proud affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, who is sponsored by Connexus Credit Union. Go hashtag Money Talk if you want to talk about your money, and you can go to www.connexusmoneytalk.ca for information on how you can save on your life, your love. And get yourself into a happy little boat to mm-hmm. sail around the world of sorts. No? All right. Kind of. I don't know. Um, <coughs> lots of stuff. So, yeah. Last well, we week. got two weeks for some stuff. Yeah, I know. Last week, we won't cover a bunch of stuff, but last week, no. uh, we released the deep dive that Anthony and I did. Right. And had some super, super kind words from Arturo. Um, if you go to the Epworth podcast on Instagram, you can find it. Um, Find it there. And Facebook. Or you can go on Facebook. We posted his response. It was really cool, especially because like I wouldn't have been expect I wouldn't have expected us to make any impact whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Let alone one where he would say, like, man, listening to your guys' story of how you started and, and yeah. everything from like the F the entertain facts account to now the F word and everything in between and stuff, he's like, It's crazy. He's like, Because I can remember where I was during those specific episodes. Hmm, that's and wild. It, again, I say this all the time because I think it's just awesome. Arturo was the first one or one of the first people to criticize only because I made a mistake with the Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom of Hearts. So oh. I said Kingdom of Hearts, which is more like a fact already. check. It was, but he fact checked it. And 
it was the first time someone actually fact checked mm-hmm. and I got super nervous about it and I was worried that we'd lose him as a fan and turns out no um, so yeah that's uh, that was sweet how that all started and how we got here now yeah uh, special 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 shout out to my two friends Taki aka Panayoti and Jumana because they got married last week oh, yeah. it was a fun time Excellent. Sophie and I were in Calgary we had a good time seeing everybody we saw uh, Dimitri from the real locker room talk right got some on. good pictures with him and uh, yeah it was a good time Excellent. it was it was really really nice um, we'll have to be a collab one day one day oh, I, what I'm working on now is uh, I mentioned it I think I mentioned it to Anthony or Robert that I'm going to get that Behringer back up and running mm-hmm. and uh, that way I can feed it directly to my phone so I don't actually have to pay audio through my speaker Okay. and then I can possibly do just a straight up phone call that'll feed right into the audio of Audacity mm-hmm. uh, so that would be sweet nice um, also every single time I keep forgetting to put this as a note. There's one dude that I haven't been, I haven't shouted out at all. And I kind of feel like a dick because he's kind of like our main guy on Facebook. And by main, I mean, he's the one that always likes our stuff. And that would be uh, Mr. Austin Ireland. Every single time I look on Facebook, he's liked our videos, our posts or whatever. So uh, Austin, if you're listening, man, um, I appreciate it every single time. Yeah. And then another one is Henry Greenberg. He's always kind of been in the mix as well. Uh, so yeah, I just want to keep making sure that I pay, pay due to whoever is kind of like reaching out to us or, our, or like and paying more attention to it because, yeah. uh, especially after Arturo sent that message, I was like, damn, yeah, like, that it hits, it hit. Um, okay. All right. Um, uh, I don't know if that Robert deep dive, that life in hip hop is going to be released anytime soon. I might save it. I'm not sure. We're going to see. Just uh, release I might, it. I might release it. Well, I, I'm having him listen to it. Oh, okay. So and it's not done yet. No, it's it's yeah. done. Oh, okay. Well, but whatever happens, happens. I, I could release it tomorrow if I wanted oh, to, which go. I'm not. But I like to make sure that he's happy with it because he's in it. Yeah. And so far, he's enjoying it. And oh, I sent good. it to Ethan, too, because we were talking hip-hop, and he's like, dude, send it to me. Yeah. Um. All right. I guess we could start with uh, Spider-Man. Go for it. He's fucking back. Yeah, and it's like I don't know what I. I'm again. I've I've been always on the Marvel side of the whole confrontation. So mm-hmm. Sony smartened up, in my opinion, mm-hmm. and made it right. And they said one more, but they might. This might be publicity. Might be whatever. But I, I love Tom Holland's response on his uh, Twitter account or Instagram, one of the two, Instagram account. Mm-hmm. Where he uh, he posted that little clip from Wolf of Wall Street with Jordan Belfort. It's one. like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not fucking going anywhere. <laughs> That's funny about that. I yeah. didn't even see that when you sent it to me. Oh, really? You and didn't? I was, no, no, no. I, I saw oh. it after. But I was watching at work today because it was super dead at work. Oh, I yeah. was watching the B roll behind the scenes of the Wolf of Wall Street. Just oh, okay. Yeah, so that yeah, was yeah. actually funny That's that funny. you sent yeah. it and it was that. But best response ever for him as the actor for sure. He's like, I'm not going anywhere now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and now, so John Watts, the guy that directed the first one and Far From Home, which yeah. I still haven't seen yet, uh, yeah. he's he's going to be on, he's on board currently for the third one, mm-hmm. um, which is cool. I mean, I, I don't know. He's done, good. he's done really good with both. Honestly, like Homecoming, you liked Homecoming. I, I enjoyed sure. it. And you lot. haven't seen Far From Home yet. Not yet. Cause I'm, uh, I'm, I'm now, I'm now, oh, sorry. I'm going to say I'm now more casual than the casual movie goer in a way. But speaking of the casual movie bo- goer, he is back. So any of our fans who know of the casual movie goer, he took a hiatus for a little bit, Fair a enough. much needed hiatus. And we talked about it on the the deep dive with Anthony and I. Yeah. And uh, Anthony reached out. I reached out to him just to make sure everything's okay. Everything's cool. He's back and he's back to doing his thing. And I am so, so happy. Nice. Um, so we got to get him. If, if you do like reviews, especially short form on Instagram, he's got like... He's got the Instagram thing that we should have done with Entertaining Facts yeah. from day one. He's the guy that nailed it, and he's doing really good. So I'm just happy that he's back and every, and he's good. That yeah. was a big thing because he was gone for a while, and we we're like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. But anyways, I'm more casual than he is at this point yeah. based on his name, and not having seen it. I thought it was out on Tuesday, mm-hmm. this past Tuesday, so I went to Sunrise to go buy the DVD. Yeah. And, I, and he's like, yeah, that doesn't come out till like next week. I was like, ah, okay, sorry. Sorry. So that was that. Um, 
I I have this theory that they never stopped negotiating. And yeah, that they I, just told everybody that so yeah. that the fucking fans can just chill, chill the fuck out. out. Yeah, maybe. Like, and they wouldn't have chilled because at, we all thought that he wasn't. It was nothing was going to happen. Yeah. But my guess is they put out whatever press releases they had put out to be like, no, it's not going to happen. And even the one guy's like, the door is closed for now. Yeah. I don't think the door ever closed. I think they've just been secretly working on it. Yeah. Because. I think they knew they had to come to a conclusion one way or another. Now, obviously, they had massive, massive back, back, backlash because of it. Not just from fans, but from like the stars. The Russo brothers spoke up about it. And just and like they did it respectfully. It's like, you know, it'd be a big mistake kind of thing. You know, it's not a it's not a good move kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's like without a doubt. And that's the thing, praising Kevin Feige for what he's done with the with it. So Listen, Sony's had their cracks at it and they only got it twice, yep. right? And Marvel has been able to do it. Yeah. And it also helps that Marvel has those other movies to put him in, yeah. like Infinity War and in um, Endgame. Well, mm-hmm. even though it was like small portions in Endgame. Yeah. But enough there that it's like, oh, we can we can kind of grow with him in a short period of time. Yeah. Um, and, I've, and I am one of those people now that I would say, as opposed to before, where I was actually more leaning towards Disney than I was in the middle. And then I got more on Marvel's side. You and Sony before. Oh, sorry, it was Sony. Yeah. Now more on on Marvel, Disney, whatever, Yeah. uh, on their side. And I'm just glad that they figured that shit out because I think both can benefit from having Spider-Man in their world. Well, yeah, it's just let them quarterback it the way they know how to do it and just Mm -hmm. come along for the ride at the end of the day and come to a fair agreement at the end of the day. It's some fucking money, man. Yeah. Why make billions when we can make millions? Exactly. And if they failed again, then they know that, like, that first movie that would have come out yeah, from them would have had everything riding on it because if they would have screwed up, yeah, then some dude's gonna put a petition because. But that would have been a huge. Petitions. Let's be honest, that would have been a big risk and a blemish on the on that character, and yeah. and that's the thing. That's that's the shitty thing that would have happened is that it would have been a bad little bit of black mark on it. Totally for uh, for that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I I don't know. I'm glad that they figured it out. I honestly think they were working on it the whole time. Yeah. Like, let's not have anybody, it, it, like, get Influence. in the way of our yeah. negotiations. Well, that's, that's on them, too, for advertising what they've advertised for the first part. They're the ones that control the media for the most part. Truth. So, Truth. Yeah. I'm glad it's where it's at. And let's say they're doing the third. I think they're going to keep going no matter what. For as long as the Marvel Universe is going to continue, Spider-Man will always be in it, I think. For as long as Sony doesn't have to do jack shit, sit back drink their Mai Tai, like, smoke we got their this. cigars, this and that, be like, oh, yeah. thanks for the money. Yeah. They're like the money room guys, or no, they're like the guys in the movie Casino yeah. that are are not allowed to, in Vegas. Yeah. So they're in the back of this grocery shop at this big table with a bl- single black light and just waiting for that money to come in. Yeah. That's all they're doing. That's yeah. it. Um, I don't know where else to go. Just where else going to down go? your list, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Emmys teach me that I barely have. Oh yeah, I wrote this down. Emmys have taught me that I bar- have barely scratched the surface on how many shows there are out there. Oh, there's so many, and Dude. like different platforms now. Like you, you gotta broaden out and get those other platforms. Otherwise, you're really missing out. Oh and my god, it's so many. It's Dude. nuts. I never the, even heard of Fleabag. See, that's the th- it's on Amazon. So mm. I've been uh, watching a little bit more Amazon stuff now. And uh, are you enjoying it? I very much so. Uh, but I'm, I'm not watching Fleabag, per no, se. Yeah. But just in general, there's a lot of Amazon originals. And I'm like, they're in their first season, so it's kind of nice you get that eight episodes and you're done. You gotta, Which is what Anthony mentioned the last time we were talking about. Like, what do you like, the full bore? Or do you like a little bit less? And it's like, mm-hmm. it's nice that you don't have the full commitment, the eight episodes and you're done. But then you're like, if you really like a series, you're like, ah, that's it? Mm-hmm. It's like, I want more. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's... Uh I'm surprised that Game of Thrones won as much as it did, especially for that shitty yeah, last season. Yeah, it, uh, uh, outstanding uh, drama series. Uh no, not this time. Yeah, what was it up against though? Uh, what did we say? Uh, you want to look it up? I'm looking up just the winners right now. Okay. I don't know what the nominations were, but it was up for almost every every category for sure. It had four. Music is the only thing I would give it to, and I'd be like, go for it. I don't think it won anything for songs, did it? It's fucking weird. It should have. I honestly, the soundtrack is one of the best I've ever heard, um, and the the uh, the directors, the ones, the what was it, the category for directors or whatever? Yeah. But it was basically an episode winning, 
Uh, and Game of Thrones was up for four of them, like nominated four times, it and it win. lost. No, Ozark won. Oh, nice. But that's the thing. It's like if it had to lose anything, I'm glad it kind of lost to Ozark because the Ozark is amazingly written and a great series on its own too. Speaking of which, I didn't know that Jason Bateman had directed Reparations, a drama series. He won too. The repar- like the, it's an actual. I believe the show is called Reparations. Oh, interesting. Um, Jason Bateman directing drama series Reparations. Hmm. So I, I didn't see that. That's sweet. Interesting. Um, yeah, and with, now that you mentioned Ozark too, cause yeah, I haven't seen the second season yet. First season's real good. Yeah, second Dude, season. Let me see your life. eye. It's gotten better. Uh, yeah, it's gotten oh yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I had that eye thing too. That was weird. It's it was like half, half. It was like red. Yep. Um, of course, Peter Dinklage won. I he's mean, yeah. He, he's kind of the go-to who's always going to win, in my opinion, for that. Been supporting giving it to him. Yeah, but he's, he, he's earned it though. Let's be honest. Out of everything from that TV series, and especially, it's kind of it's kind of sh- tough to you know award so much to that Game of Thrones, especially because this is all about the last season, right? It's not about mm-hmm. the entire series; it's just about the last season that showed up. And he did have the most lines. And he did have the most lines. He had the most uh, prolific lines to say where he could actually embody more of his character. Um, not everyone got that chance, so definitely they threw it into his court. Um, but everyone else was thrown into the ring too. Like Sophie Turner was thrown there. Amelia Clark was thrown in there for supporting actress. Amelia Clark was lead. Sorry. Was it lead? Okay. I think I Amelia found something. So yeah. Game of Thrones won the Outstanding Drama Series. Better Call Saul was on there. Oh, so good. Bodyguard, yeah. um, Bodyguard should have won was hands down. Yeah, that was pretty so good. So good, Killing Eve, Ozark. I heard Ozark was amazing. First season yeah. was good. Uh, I'm trying to see. Oh, I'm I'm actually choked. Russian Doll didn't win because I really really liked. What Russian was that for? Drama. It was on uh, Outstanding Comedy Series. Oh, uh, but that was the Flea Bag. But I haven't seen Flea Bag, so I can't. Yeah, I have no it. idea. So, lead actress was. Amelia Clark was up for it. Was up for it, yeah. And then the, Robin Wright for House of Cards, which is surprising that House of Cards is even still going on, but whatever. Yeah, yeah I think it was a, it was the final season, anyways. Yeah. But then Jodie Comer won for Killing Eve. Haven't seen it. Uh, Jason Bateman for Ozark. Oh, Ozark Reparations, the episode. Oh, there you uh, go. Directing for a drama series. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And he won because Weiss and Benioff were nominated for the Iron Throne. David Nutter for the Last of the Starks. Miguel Sapochnik for The Long Night. That's so funny. Game of Thrones had three yep. nominations for episodes. And Ozark for Reprie. I gotta see I gotta watch this second season. Um Kit Harrington won for lead actor, but it went to Billy Porter for Pose. Haven't seen that one. Yeah, I have no idea what that's about. Um Gwendolyn Quist- Christie for Game of Thrones, Lena Headley, Sophie Turner, and Maisie Williams. It threw them all, all in for supporting actress, and then Julia Garner won for Ozark. <laughs> Ozark like taking them down. Honestly though, Julia and Garner did amazing for supporting actress. You and have I, seen the second season. I have seen the second oh, season. Yeah, nice. it's amazing. And her character gets way more into it. Like it's I really like the first season. I don't know why like I haven't the gotten sec- the second you'll one. You'll like the second a lot more, trust me. Yeah, actually, you know what? All things considering, it didn't seem like Game of Thrones won that much. Aside from the they fact that they were nominated the for one. almost everything, but they won the drama series one, which is which the big one. It's kind of a whatever. Mm-hmm. And then Peter Dinklage won for his. I think uh, the drama was more of a celebration of the entirety of the whole series and mm-hmm. what it accomplished, even with the tripping at the season eight mark kind of thing. So I think they were kind of con- congratulating it as a whole, but. Mm-hmm. Even though they do it season by season. It it's, is what it is. It's funny that they have a variety sketch series. Even though, I mean, Saturday Night Live, I think, wins all the time. I haven't looked at the history of it, but yeah. there's two, four, five of I'm them. surprised that John Oliver won for a talk show, to be honest. Yeah, last week tonight. It's a pretty popular one. Is it's it because is it because he's very political? They're all political. Stephen no, Colbert, no, no. Political, full Steve, frontal, Steven's Daily Show. <sighs> the only two that aren't would be Late Late Show with James Corbin. Corden, sorry. Yeah. And then Jimmy, Jimmy Kill and Jimmy Kimmel, Kimmel Live. Fallon wasn't even Fallon nominated. Fallon wasn't nominated. That's surprising. Yeah, See, I, I like Corden like better for out of all of those. Mm-hmm. Oliver, whatever. I, again, I don't listen to political stuff. Colbert's is okay. It's probably for your be- the best. Probably. I've, I've taken a backseat on all that shit for the most part. I, I, mind politics. you, I don't have TV anymore, so it doesn't even matter. But I used to keep up regularly with the talk shows and Just stuff like that. Just be careful when you go into YouTube. Oh, yeah. Dude. Uh, Michelle Williams won for a, a limited series or movie. I, she's an amazing actress, so mm-hmm. fucking good for her. Patricia Arquette was also nominated. Um, Amy Adams. 
Aun Janu Ellis for when they see us, but I haven't seen when they see us. I heard that's amazing too. Um, 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 Black Mirror Bandersnatch one for television movie. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot. I don't know. Interesting. That's fine. I just there's so much fucking shit here. Yeah. Like I, I'm going through this now, and I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? I usually kind of enjoy watching the award shows because they're they're fun to watch, whatever. Especially um, when they have Ricky Gervais, who oh well, but, he's well, he's he wasn't gold. this year. He's Golden Globes. Not Emmys. Sorry, Golden Globes. You're but right. Emmys, Emmys is the one that sneaks up because that's all TV. Yeah. So it, Golden it, Globes is like yeah. the, the 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 backyard party of the so Oscars. I don't know how if Emmys Emmys kicks off or ends all the year kind of thing. I would say. That's a good question. Okay. Because well, it's at the tail end of now, and then we don't get another award ceremony until January. Thing. The I think it finishes it because we are now in the beginnings of the Oscar race. Sure. So maybe the Oscar race starts it. But the Oscars don't but recognize TV. The Golden Globes are before the Oscars. Yes, they are. So because then, it's a pre- preemptive uh, preamble to Oscars, if you want to put it that way. It's, that's a good fucking question. I don't know. Because you also have all those film festivals that also give awards. So one Film festivals argue, are one thing. That's different, okay. I think. I think so let's just, look at the mainstream. It's basically like going to a weekend uh, getaway and like you won best couple that's what those in, in my opinion that's what the festival s- ceremonies are all about it's like oh yeah this guy we really liked him this re- weekend so he's gonna get the award yeah but they're, they're big for independence I, I get it but I would argue that at this point the independent movie reviews are better than the mainstream movie reviews yeah. because a lot of us can't even see these movies but I don't know how many people actually pay attention and, and like I know I pay attention to what's out but i don't mm-hmm. i have for the last couple of years i haven't seen a lot of the movies that have been coming out yeah. however i am getting my tickets for joker tomorrow so oh i'm gonna go see it next saturday oh, so dang. we would have already recorded our episode and then the day of release is when i'm gonna go see it so i'll give them something to talk about oh very nice um i guess we can go into joker now go for I it i understand this oh yeah i guess yeah i think this is well he crazy well i remember the fact that it's even on a conversation piece because uh, there was an interview with Joaquin Phoenix, and he actually walked off. And I thought he walked off because he was pissed off. He actually walked off because he was actually very distraught that he thought that his movie would, the movie that he's a part of and who he portrays, would uh, give that kind of uh, resonate with someone in that negative manner, and he'd mm-hmm. be associated with something like like that. Um, and, the, and and they're now comparing it to the Dark Knight shooting. Exactly. So I mean, it's very very coincidental. It could very well be the same group. And the fact is that they've. This is well. I don't know if it was an actual group. I think it was individuals true. for the. Dark it could have been individuals for sure. Um, but, but now work. these ones are copycat. Let's say or doing whatever. Who maybe the fact that there's chatter and it's preemptive and everyone kind of there's an already a little bit of a heads up that hey it's gonna happen at a major city you don't because know somebody which one said it too exactly like well there's the, actually plans that they found yeah yeah on, that's on what they announced recording. they said that there is uh chatter in the dark yeah. web and that's where they said it happened in through the dark web that they're gonna do this at the joker premiere or showing but you don't know which theater you don't know which night you don't know which showing so okay. that makes it even worse kind of knowing but not knowing at all. So it's like, do theaters now have to have like metal detectors, which isn't a terrible idea to be honest, but well, that seems it, like ridiculous too. I think if you're, I mean, in the States where you can carry guns, I think someone has sent a picture of a guy at like seven 11 with a huge automatic rifle on the back, on his back, which and is he's just allowed. It's to. crazy. Yeah. yeah. To us as Canadians and probably to the rest of the world, it seems excessive. Like Very you much. don't need one at a seven 11. Yeah. An air 15. Um, things. Yeah, I, I mean, we're almost the complete opposite. We're, mm-hmm. we're so fucked up here sometimes that if someone breaks into your house and you do something to them, you yeah. get fucking sued. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Um, well, I think the States has that a little bit too. No, they have justifiable homicide. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so I, justifiable homicide in the sense that you're defending yourself when they have a weapon too. For sure. But let's most, say most that, persons, that most people that come in will have some yeah. type of a weapon. So if they come at you with a bat and you hit them with a chair, blunt instrument... <sighs> Right. That's that's an accidental death. If you go for like the full on like I'm gonna beat the shit out of this guy, then that's a totally different scenario. But like we're talking you just straight up shoot this guy and he dies in your living then or he dies or injured. Injured very much, then yeah. See, I I don't know what the fuck I would do if yeah. someone even even with the rules that there are, like if someone's coming in and starting to like to to start some shit, like mm-hmm. I don't know. Do I have to wait for him to hit me first and then I can hit him back with equal yeah. force? Like, I don't know the exact rules. Yeah. I do know a cop, though, so I could ask them. Yeah. 
Um, anyways, I, I really hope that this is just a hoax, to be honest. Yeah, um, it's a, it's really sad that it's yeah. like, and like you said, we talked about it. Like, it's just a movie, for goodness sake. Like, why? Like, Even what's it, the point? How many movies have come out since The Dark Knight and this Joker movie? I don't understand what the Joker, per se, has to do with it. I understand the ethos behind him. Yeah. But I don't know how you could watch it and want to go out and cause shit like that. Yeah. Even yeah, sure. It has real world violence, but what hasn't since then and before then and will continue after yeah. then? Like, I don't know. Someone mm-hmm. could No, I'm not gonna say it. No, I'm not gonna say it. But <laughs> I'm just gonna say this. Someone could take Thanos's ideals and really apply it if they wanted to in a way. Yeah. Not really not realistically, but like could have that mentality. Yeah. I don't think it matters that it's a joker and I I really hope that a nothing happens. Obviously. That's the number one thing, and and I hope this is just something that a bunch of shitheads are talking about in the dark web because that's yeah. what they can do. Yeah, like because this movie looks like it's going to be something really awesome for all of us to enjoy. Yeah, and I don't think that it's something to spawn a copycat because mm-hmm. the same could be said about a dude dressing up as Captain America and being a vigilante on the streets if you really yeah. wanted to. Yeah, just get a shield made out of whatever a car hood. <laughs> But uh, anyways, um, I guess you can go into the Jeffrey Wright to play Commissioner Gordon. That's, That's a good one. Sweet. I I, I yeah. like him. He's good. He's, he's got awesome. that. He's got that nice uh, commanding voice every time. He's got but a presence, but man. it's so funny that he was People Hernandez in the originals in Shaft. In Shaft. <laughs> yeah, Yo, not I the original, that. not no, the original the one. Second. The second yeah, yeah. remake in the two thousands. The, the, the first one was Samuel Jackson, which also has no, no. I think the first ever Shaft was actually. Older than that. No, no, no. I'm saying this is the first one with Samuel Jackson. Oh, the yeah. The original yeah. had the original Shaft, who yeah. was in the remake with Samuel Jackson. Yes, 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 Who yes. played his uncle. Yeah. And then also, if people pay attention, a young Christian Bale who plays the douchiest of, douchiest of bags ever. Yep. Like, oh, man. Yeah. So brutal. But People's Hernandez. That's hilarious. People's, he was so good as People's, oh, too. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, wow. I'm super excited for that. I think that's a great call. Yeah. Uh, and then there's been teases of Jonah Hill wanting to be, um, I think, wanting, he's going to be, or he's either going to be or in talks of, and he's yeah. asking for a shit ton of money, but nobody knows what he's going to play. I don't yeah. understand why he riddled is on the table. If he's not Penguin, I don't want to see it. <laughs> I, he's not as big as he used to be, so. Jonah Hill? Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Neither is Chris Hemsworth. And look what, what oh, that's, how big of a beautiful bastard they that's made him. That's true. And the Penguin in the... Gotham series, he's not big. I guess I'm. Well, I'm, no, I'm, in the I'm Gotham always, series, they made him super skinny. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm just going back to seeing. I remember Danny DeVito. Oh, <laughs> that's so why. good. But uh, I mean, and and the TV series always had him chubby for some so reason. So picture, well, because that's his character, right? Yeah. But picture a Jonah Hill as a Donny Azoff or whatever his name is from Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. As the Penguin, that'd be interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then the Wolf of Wall Street ends up being a prequel to the Penguin. Oh. Nailed it. Perfect. Sorry. To the Batman. The Wolf of Wall Street is a prequel to the Batman where he turns into Penguin. Huh? Different era, isn't it? Uh, It's before. It was like 90s. So, I mean, depending on when this Batman is, it's probably not going to happen. But I think, yeah, Penguin is Uh, the way to go. Yeah, it'd be interesting for Jonah Hill. I think it'd be way better than a Riddler. Yeah. I don't know who would be a good Riddler. No, I don't know either. Um... Yeah, if Joaquin, Again, do you if stick Joaquin with Phoenix D- wasn't the Joker, he'd play a pretty decent yeah, Riddler, pretty, I think. Yeah. Actually, I could see him more as a Two Face as well. Yeah, but I really want John Hamm as Two Face. Yeah. Well, because he like looks basically got, like Aaron Eggerhart. Uh no. no he he um, looks like the cartoon version of Harvey Dent. Aaron Eckhart, that's Aaron it. Ar- no, they don't look He the did same. he uh, No man. I they think they have close. the same jawline. <laughs> I think that's what I'm looking at. Like Yeah, but no, like the the face structure, he'd look great. Yeah. Um yeah, anyways, that would be sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, should we talk trailers? Yeah, no, there's... I already mentioned... Uh, I already mentioned... Um, what's his nuts? Chris Hemsworth. So I'll go into this one. Oh, okay. For some reason, I don't think it... I, don't, I think this might have been a joke. Hmm. But the Russos had said that uh, uh, New Master 69 was Wong. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. No, no. And and it doesn't matter, really. <laughs> well, I think it's one of those things where, like, they don't need to. Yeah. Like, we, we have enough of the movie. You don't need to keep throwing in extra stuff. Yeah. Like, if it makes sense, I guess, then it's cool. Yeah. Like, oh, 
Spider-Man was the kid in Iron Man 2 the whole time. Oh, that's cool. You know, kind of a whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you really think about it, when you really think about it, I don't think that Noob Master 69 Mm -hmm. is Wong for the reasons that we talked about in the chat. One of which is the, the, the status of the fucking servers. Mm-hmm. Five years later, which I know, oh, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, yeah. we got onto it. Yeah, I'm trying to see like, where I'm trying to see. That's a conversation like, for a whole other <laughs> time. Okay. I think I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I found it. Uh, Russo brothers with the check mark. Yeah, we just want to confirm that New Master 69 was Wong. Nope, not not real. Um, but it just doesn't make sense. Why, unless Wong was really pretending to cry and call for his dad to throw off Thor, but why is Wong playing Fortnite? Yeah. I mean, I could see Korg and the rest of them, but I went to a deeper, but you guys didn't feel like you wanted to go that deep. But I'm saying that there's, there wasn't enough, there isn't enough tech support to run a Fortnite server five years That's after what you the think. snap. Just saying. Think about the Fortnite staff that they have to run the servers. Half of them are gone. The other half can keep it going. Can they though? Yes, they can. Would they want to go back though? Yeah, they would. Eventually, they would. So. They want a, some semblance of their life eventually to just go on in mourning and beyond that. It's not doesn't make sense. Everything but it was would try only to only five years. Yeah, but you're telling me that because of this snap, the whole thing is shut down or back to the Stone Age, and no one's going to do anything. No, they're going to keep essentials running. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they would have got to the point where they wanted the luxuries of everything back. So yeah, that was available. See, my thing is, this is what I put it. Yeah, this is directly from the chat. All of Hawkeye's family was gone. Okay. So the 50 unlucky. 50 thing didn't seem to work there. And so there's a high probability that the, ma- the, ma- the majority of the tech people monitoring and maintaining the servers for Fortnite at the <sighs> least would have either all been snapped and left one guy. And then that one guy would have had to find somebody else who can run a server. And their whole th- idea was like, you know. It's been two and a half years. Everyone's vanished. How about you come over here and we run these Fortnite servers because Thor and Korg want to and now Wong. Again, I find your theory very flawed only for the fact that you're trying to say that within a room, 50% are gone. So right now, if the snap happened, one of us would be gone. No, it's just 50% of everybody. But that's why I brought this up where Hawkeye's thing was his whole family was gone all yeah. five of them so uh, in that server four. there could have been four One, two, three, kate four her two boys and his wife yeah four. so four of them okay so no i'm not saying that it's just it's 50 50 that oh, way okay i'm saying that even if the rules are 50 50 he was the only one left out of his family of five okay so in these servers even if you take even just that probability and there's a thousand people working there, a good chunk of them are gone, and they're not thinking about the servers. Then they've got to worry about, okay, well, how long are we going to take? Then we got to go back and dust off all of our boxes and then get this server back up and running to, to hey, get... Like, I understand getting back to your real life, but I don't know, man. Anthony also made a point that... I, I, I don't know if this is legit, but um, it just doesn't make sense that why would... Why would Wong pretend to be a kid when Thor was like, oh, you go cry to your dad and everything like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. and then he got off the server. Um, but he mentioned something that the the world of, the universe of that, of the MCU, I guess, yeah. is more technologically advanced, and I don't know. Like, yeah. we know that Stark Tower was the first self-sustaining yeah. building. But we don't know if that's echo, or if that's been moved on to everything else, or if he's just kept the toys for himself, mm-hmm. which it seems like he has. It's possible. I don't know, man. Not but, uh, not enough Teslas are being driven around there. Screw Tesla. Uh, what? Mm-hmm. Do you ever that's right. With Tesla? Yeah, I don't like him. The guy, the Elon Musk. No, I don't care for the car. How come? I just don't care for it. I don't care for electric, to be honest. I like. Is it because you like the feel? I like the feel of everything. Yeah, this goes back to like the Demolition Man movie with uh, Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. He hated everything about. He got brought back and dealing with like electric this, electric. He's like, this is stupid. Then he finally gets his hands on old muscle. Yeah, this is what it's all about, and that's exactly how I feel now. So Soph and I were watching. It's so funny you mentioned that. Soph and I were watching The Fifth Element last night. Oh, perfect. Still so good. Yes. Okay. And then it got me thinking about Demolition Man. Yep. 
you watch Demolition Man now. I encourage everybody. It's it it's a little dated in terms of how it looks, mm-hmm. but just watch it. And I think I've mentioned it on the show before. You come tell me. You can tweet at me at the F words G or email us at the F word podcast at gmail dot com. And you tell me that it doesn't look like the world we're heading into already. You just picture it. Yeah. There was franchise wars where Taco Bell won. Yeah. People have been categorized based on their talents, or at least the freezing process. Yeah. You can't swear, so they're suppressing people's speech. Yeah. You can't do graffiti. You can't move outside the lines. You have to use seashells to wipe your ass with. They've gotten rid of paper. Mm. Okay. I'm just saying that movie, the more and more our world is moving <laughs> towards to, like the way that it's moving towards that movie and Minority Report. Yeah. We're there, man. <laughs> that's that's the world we're going to live in where fucking Taco Bell is going to be the winner of the franchise wars. And we're all going to be having a fall in line because the whole world is going to go to shit. And we're going to have to find fucking Dennis Leary in the sewers so we can have some semblance of a real life. And then we've got to wait for fucking Sylvester Stallone to unfreeze and save us somehow. I mean, watch the movie. Just watch it. It's just funny that you mentioned Demolition Man. Yeah. It's such a good movie. So is The Fifth Element. And anytime there's a conversation of electric cars and that, I'd like to drive one for about all of a week and then I'll be like, yeah, I'm done. How great. Have, do you remember Demolition Man? Very much so. How awesome, though, is that idea when the car crashes that the whole thing covers in foam? And oh, yeah. Nobody dies? Oh, yeah. That seems like a pretty good system. Very much so. But anyways, man. Yeah. yeah that, that, that movie scares me more than it, I, mean, I enjoy. Yeah. Um, but anyways, no, new Master 69 is not Wong. That's gonna, that's a stretch. Russo's. Yeah. Russo's. Um, okay, where do we go? We went that, we said that. Shaq is the new celebrity, but, oh, apparently Shaq is the celebrity. Yeah, I read up a little bit on that, and I guess Papa John... He basically tried to, he played the victim because of the whole knee thing. Okay. Uh, that, and he's like, they lost sales and this and that. And then. What actually happened? What was the controversy? Was it racial? It was racial in in nature, I guess you could say. I ba- basically blamed the knee situation, like kneeing at the Super Bowls and that, that thing. Oh. That it hurt his franchise somehow, that no one would come eat his pizza. I don't know what the heck. I no, think he played the victim on a, on a total situation that he had no effect on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some like neo-Nazi groups loved the fact that he went against the knee thing of and course. because it was black people doing it, obviously. What a bunch of idiots. And then, so he's a, Apologize since then, and he's taken a step down from the CEO position. But apparently, he's taken a step down, even from the CEO, and he's done it. He's done it before, actually. Probably back in oh, collect that money five. He did it before he got Peyton Manning. Yeah, maybe. So he 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 himself CEO like Papa John himself Mm. took a step down back in oh five for other. I can't remember what the hell happened. Anyways, and then he came back in oh eight three years later Mm. with a co. CEO situation, and then that did all lasted all of like a week or something like that. Just didn't like the cut of the other guy's jib. Probably, I think it was a chick. But anyways, like the, cut, like the cut of her jib, maybe. And then now he's stepping down again. Wow. So and then now Shaq's in. Now Shaq's in for the endorsement part, which the same thing that Peyton yeah. Manning was. It's not he's made, he's not as really like he's taking on the CEO position. He's just basically being the face of Papa John for now. Hey Papa John, can I get some pizza? <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know why even, that wasn't even a thing. It just seems funny. Um, I just have to read up on a few of these things. I'm like, the yeah. hell? I never even heard of this. I'm like, right, yeah. And now he's got Shaq probably to <laughs> make it seem like everything's fine. Yep. You got to do what you got to do in today's day and age. You have to sneeze. You look like you're ready to sneeze. You know what? There's times I've been trying to sneeze and it just won't come. And it's like, I'm ready and it doesn't happen. Sergeant, are you stifling a yawn? <laughs> um, um, um. Baby, I got your money, don't you worry. What you got? Uh, Sam Jackson is Alexa. 
Not, I think that would be kind of cool. That's hilarious. That's so awesome. He's he's the first, I guess, of uh, the new wave of like some celebrities are going to lend their voice to it's Alexa. Be amazing. They need oh, they yeah. need to have Paul Bettany do a Jarvis one so you can have Jarvis as Alexa. A hundred percent. The fact that that hasn't been first and then yeah. have Friday. That a- would, any anything like related to that would be amazing. Yeah, be have have the woman that did Friday have Paul Bettany and. Have his wife, Jennifer Connelly, because she was Karen's, uh, the voice of Karen in Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, she's his suit voice. Oh, okay. And, cool. and, and Paul Bettany and Jennifer Connelly are married. Oh, yeah. Which is awesome. And she was she was so good. Wow. I would rather, at this point, actually, I'd prefer Friday. I like, I just like yeah. when he switched to Friday. Jar- Jarvis is cool. iconic for sure. But yeah, the Friday voice. I like the Scottish accent. I do. Me too. Like, or, she just sounded that'd be more so Irish. good. Because he made the joke, he's like, I'm, I'm picturing a redhead. I think you're yes. mistaken with someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. I, that's why I'm thinking it's Irish. Uh, yeah, I think it's more it Irish. Be, yeah, yeah, it's more Irish than it is Scottish. Yeah, did I say Scottish? Who knows? I, said, I said Scottish, but I think it's more Irish, to be honest. Buddy, I don't even know what I said. Yeah, anyways, that would be sweet. Yeah, but apparently there's two versions. You can get like explicit and non-explicit. So he'll oh, swear dude. at you. And it's only a 99 cent upgrade from what I understand. Now, is it a 99 cent upgrade from like a monthly subscription that you pay? Or is it a 99 cent upgrade and done? Kind of thing. To go from Alexa to Sam Jackson yeah. Alexa? That's interesting. I don't know. My, my, I'm, I'm I kind of want to buy an Echo just for one. Just for that reason. See, I wouldn't get Alexa. I wouldn't get the Google Home or whatever. I would paranoid? get Apple, whatever. I don't need any more of my information being out there in the yeah, web whatever. as it already is. I got nothing to hide. I don't have anything to hide either, but it's just, there's just so much of it. Yeah. Like, I think it was this. You don't uh, think it's already out there? Okay, remember that? Do you know that food company, Dash? Food Dash? Dark Dash? <sighs> no. Something Dash? There's this food company, 4.65 million peop- individuals' personal information because mm-hmm. it was hacked. Oh. And it was, uh, it was talking about. Is that like a, like a skip the dishes thing? It's like a skip the dishes. Oh, okay. And so four point some odd million people got their information hacked, which includes emails, parts of your credit card, your address, all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just it's just the, in the hands of somebody else for them to do with what they want. Yeah, right? that's fair. And so and Alexa, the people behind Alexa, like Google's already said, yeah, we're monitoring, we've said it, yeah. but we're doing it so we can better serve you. Yeah. And I'm like... No thanks. Okay, in in the world of tech, there is some good that we're so attached and so connected. Because I, a, fr- a coworker of mine, told me a story of this guy who had his Apple Watch on. And he was up for a hike or some shit. He fell. He fell from a decent distance, and he was knocked unconscious. His Apple Watch recognized that, sent a message to his family letting him know he fell from a distance of this and this and this, and he's currently whatever. And he alerted authorities. That's fucking crazy. So the tech monitoring him and being on him the whole time, and this is, okay, Alexa versus Apple Watch, but just in the sense of like being always being 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 monitored saved this guy's life. I haven't read the story. This is all just I heard from the coworker of mine, and I thought that story is crazy, and I think... Yeah, definitely. I guess I guarantee you, Apple Watch sales are going to go up even more now, especially people that hear that story. I think what we're doing is because you cannot, you cannot put a price on that situation to that family. Nope. Yeah, you can't. That's that's one of those things where. Yeah. But I also believe, and this is going to sound cold, that one example. Yeah. Does not gen like definitely put not a blanket statement on the entire industry as a no, whole. No, it's just interesting that the technology is available that's to that not extent. Even interesting. That's incredible. Yeah, like that is a alerted authorities. Yeah, alerted all his family members. Yeah, and I don't know if it like recognizes that this is his daughter, this is his wife, this is his son, whatever the scenario may be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it recognized to know to message them first or you have to categorize them as family so then they get their message. But yeah, it's pretty crazy that that happened and the ambulance came within 15 minutes and he went to the hospital within 30 and probably saved his life. Ultimately, he had very minor injuries, but I think if he was out there unconscious for how long well he could have died and he could have died that's, very that's like, a, i'm gonna die situation basically if i don't get eaten yeah or like yeah or even wake up with yeah. hypothermia and then something terrible happens there you me. go so that's the that's such a 
amazing and really scary story Mm -hmm. because what are we sacrificing as a society to have these things? Yeah. And how are we, how is it going to go from there where, Mm -hmm. listen, it saved this one guy's life. That is a fucking miracle, even if you don't believe in miracles or just a miracle of technology. Yeah. And like, like I said, there's no price you can put on that mm. man's life to that family or yeah. anybody. Like, we, we shouldn't be pricing out people's lives. No. But the further it goes, mm-hmm. that the more that that becomes a one in a million shot. So yeah. the rest of us mm-hmm. in that one in a million pool, for instance, or even one in 1,000, have everything tethered to us yeah. in a way that we could be easily monitored everywhere and we will we are we are giving live like we're giving our freedom away well yeah we're selling it off for uh for a chance to win a trip or two to vegas because i went to vegas a week and a half ago or a month ago or a year ago Mm -hmm. we're selling it off because i want to be able to finish the podcast i was listening to on my phone Mm -hmm. and i want it streaming towards the rest of my house because it tethers that way and alexa knows that i'm near yeah and it's this thing that we are creating ourselves with very few safeguards because it one is data now is trading higher than anything else in the world. Mm-hmm. Data is the thing, right? These these ind- invisible waves are the thing that are happening that are our people are buying essentially. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the more data is being sold, the more they find out how to manipulate us. So I was listening to uh, Sam Harris, and he was speaking to a tech uh expert Mm -hmm. and she was saying how i'm gonna find her name sorry i really because it was it was both scary Mm -hmm. but incredibly 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 uh beneficial at least for me to know so her name is zainab tufeki tufek tufek c t-u-f-e-k-c-i and zainab is Z E Y N E P, and it's surveillance in in the world of the digital era and stuff. It's number seventy eight on Sam Harris's Making Sense podcast. Yeah, and he has a lot of these where he talks to a lot of tech people. Yeah, but that one in particular, like it, it's insane. Hmm. So the more you hear about this stuff, it's incredible. But at the same time, we are we are literally handing ourselves over to this stuff well, because sure. we want everything easier and faster. Yeah, and we're diving right in. It's like, hello, iRobot. Well, seen and, that. and the, even with Tesla, <laughs> for instance, yeah, we are. It is now going to be, and statistically, and this is another thing I heard from Sam. Statistically, driving kills about I think three million people a year, or either yeah. three million or thirty thousand. Yeah, and it's a totally big number but it's a very Throughout high the world. number uh, uh dying from uh car accidents yeah but in the world or north america in the world in the world oh, okay so i think it's three million that okay. makes more sense and it only makes sense that if someone were to say tomorrow hey it's illegal for everybody to drive their own vehicles because we have these machines that will take you to and from yeah without harming anybody mm-hmm. right if they're able to integrate that game over for anybody that wants to drive it won't happen in our lifetime we could drive for as long as we want to an yeah. extent, but it's already happening. They're already working on it. Yeah, well, Tesla's the first mark in that, right? Where it does and, the self drive thing, and they're and they're looking at create. They're already creating these little mini cities to test all of these things. Yeah, out. I think the infrastructure is the biggest problem behind it. More than for anything. sure, it, is. It's, it has nothing. The tech, it's pretty much there. It still has its own flaws, but ultimately, the infrastructure is just not created for that kind of thing. Just like infrastructure is not even created for the simplest of for us mm-hmm. bikes cyclists there is no proper way or road created for a cyclist to share the road with a car right now it's lawless for the cyclists they do whatever they want their pedestrians whatever they want and that's a whole other debate but again that's an infrastructure problem and it relates to the fact it's an that integration problem integration yeah. infrastructure whatever you want to say there's no bike lanes the roads aren't wide enough to create a bike lane mm-hmm. it's, it's all that kind of stuff so the same thing with the uh the electric car game and the self-driving cars now they can put like in these smaller cities that they're they're test pilots kind of thing whereas basically they put little sensors in the road Mm -hmm. that then talk with these vehicles and therefore it's more integrated more 
more responsive, everything like that kind of thing, right? So I could see where those ones will actually succeed a lot better. They're, the grids are created specifically for the Teslas and that kind of jazz, whatever. Um, and that's the thing. We face the problem of dealing with like the extreme cold weathers, which I don't know how that situation is going to happen. Because there's a lot of people in even our city that have them already. And I'm like, do you drive that during the winter? Like I haven't seen it yet mm. myself. Can it last the winter? You have to be very careful, especially on long hauls, because mm-hmm. there's no charging stations as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you need a special charging station. There's a lot of flaws behind it. Again, well, they're starting to integrate it more on the highways. Like okay, I know where yeah. we are, let's say from out of Calgary. Yeah. They're going to be putting them in yeah. in the spots. The other thing, too, is as much as these machines seem great, mm-hmm. they are burning way more emissions to create these batteries in these vehicles. Well, and that's just it. And, and this is the environmental issue. I'm not going to get on anything environmental. Really, no. But I'm just going to say that even when I was in culinary school and we were taught sustainable, we were taught composting everything, we were taught all of these great practices. Yeah. It costs more energy with the technology we have today yeah. to go green than it's actually saving. Yeah. And it's because we're in this weird era of the world, yeah. of our history, mm-hmm. where we haven't figured out or we haven't gotten the technology so cheap yeah. and so efficient that yeah. even us making these efficient machines mm-hmm. is not going to... Is not create the more emissions and carbon yeah. dioxide in the air. Yeah, like the plants that still need to operate these things are still operating with. No, I wouldn't. I'm not going to use. I'm not going to say it's draconian because I know a lot of people are going to be like, "Oh, this is draconian in old age and all that." No, it's not the case. We as a society and our, our technology just hasn't gotten there yet. We're moving really fast. Yeah, but it's costing us more energy to make energy. So what you really need to do is work on the plants that make these things, yeah. make them as efficient and inexpensive as possible so that you're not emitting more energy just to create four batteries for this Tesla. Yeah. Because people are just looking at the Tesla and being like, oh, it's saving energy. Maybe that one Tesla is, yeah. but the path it took to get there yeah. is a very long, well, very the- expensive, and very energy-emitting yeah. and and wasting process so that, at this point. How much energy does it take to recharge that battery? Dude, I have no idea. But I mean, everything involved right now, until we integrate it, it's going to emit more and, and, and cause more havoc than anything. Yeah. But that's called growing pains. Yeah. And I think where a lot of people are, are really faltering now is that they're jumping on the, any bandwagon they can without really diving into where where is it starting and why is it that way yeah you know um even people that i know this is kind of getting off topic Very much. Um, but even people that complain about capitalism or complain about rich people yeah okay someone had put it on my face on on the, i saw on the facebook feed they're putting pictures of like the top richest people in the world yeah one of which is bill gates yeah bill gates is so fucking close to getting rid of malaria yeah and he's and he's so, and he's invested so much of his money into saving people's lives, and it's because he has that money, True. and he's investing as much as he can in it. The other thing is, look at our TVs. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if I've ever mentioned this on the show before, but it used to cost thousands of dollars to get a sixty-inch TV. Yeah, and a very small percentage of the people could afford it. And guess what? Those were the rich people, mm-hmm. and they created a demand for gigantic TVs that we can now buy for a hundred and ninety nine dollars at a Costco. What used to cost us like six, seven grand. Every model will now like always, even like OLED's the newest and greatest thing right now. Yeah, and it costs like we're talking fifteen hundred for like the forty inch. Yep, and it's like two, two, three thousand for the fifty, sixty inch or whatever. But give it a few years, it'll be in the hundreds. <laughs> they're, they're getting <laughs> super yeah. cheap. Yeah, well, like, it, it always has that shelf life. Like plasma came out, but it's, it's plasma. Not that. Plasma. No, I'm just saying plasma and LCD in general. Like those, are, like this, like the tech market. They started out really, really high. They're worth nothing now, almost now. LEDs the new thing, and then OLED is the newest of greatest, and that for LEDs the cheapest. But the reason is because there was a demand for it, so they for kept sure. making them. And yeah. then what happened is they got more efficient at making these computers or Mm -hmm. these um tvs Mm -hmm. and then they were able to make their systems better and better and better so we all can afford to buy so they basically outpriced themselves in a sense the fact that they they, they were but they got to the efficient point where it didn't cost as much 
to make this, right? Well, exactly. But so therefore, be- they could sell it at a reasonable price. But that's because there was rich people that were buying them at seven grand. Then they're like, okay, if there's people buying them at seven grand, think about how many people are going to buy them at forty five hundred. Yeah. And then they kept lowering it and lowering it and finding more and more of a demand. Their volume went but up. But it cost so much money to make them back then. Yes. Now yeah, yeah, yeah. we've crossed over that technological period where it's actually quite efficient to make these televisions. Yeah. And therefore the TVs cost less for us. I have a, I've got a 50-inch TV in my room mm-hmm. that I remember I paid $300 for mm-hmm. that would have been $1,500 four or five years ago. Yep. So that path, if you look at that, I believe that's very analogous to the energy emissions that are going to be saved from a single Tesla. Yeah. Once we get the technology, so the guys that are making them at the plants are more efficient and are able to to sustain their businesses, run them more efficiently, lower their costs, and pump out Teslas, let's say, at a mm. cheaper price so people can buy them. Because right now, Teslas are the new giant TVs that only a select few can purchase. Yeah. And if, but like everything else, you need to you need to allow the technology to integrate itself into our society, and you need to let it. I this is my thought process. You need to let it get to that point where we can, because mm-hmm. sometimes guess what? You can't do it. Mm-hmm. It's nobody's fault. We're just not there yet. Yep. But because we're running at an at at a double the pace every year, people are expecting to to happen now. Yeah. It's like. That's not how it works, bud. <laughs> I don't even know how we... Oh, we got it on here from Demolition Man. Yep. Um, but anyways, Jurassic World 3, bringing back Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum. That's and sweet. Jeff was actually back in the second one. Oh, yeah, he was. That was terrible. Very briefly. Yeah. he was, Well, he was... Uh, his daughter was in it, too. He okay. was He was the main guy... Or wait, sorry. The second world? Like, the yeah, second he was... In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant Jurassic Park 2. No, no, no. He was in Jurassic World 2. Fallen Kingdom, which I didn't even know how they had a damn story behind that. But hey, it kind of worked. It was a little weak, but ultimately it was okay. And he had a very small role in it ultimately. But uh, bringing back uh, Sam Neill and Laura Dern, I think that's. I think it was that's inevitable. Sweet. And it was going to happen for sure. You mean they were inevitable? Absolutely sure. So it was definitely sweet. The two worlds are going to collide. So yeah. Yeah, I don't even know what they were, what they were going to plan on doing. Yeah. Um, with it all, because I don't know to what extent. Well, there's that mini clip that they had is at the battle at uh, what the heck? Battle at something Ridge? No, no, something Ridge. And uh, it was a mini movie, and it's basically now a world where the dinosaurs and the and man are living together again in the new age, right? Which is what the point was behind all of Jurassic World. They brought all these. Dinosaurs Can over from the island. The dinosaurs. They brought the dinosaurs over from the island to the world, the world they know. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it was in the same world, but to the city. And now they're going out for Ampit, and they're just living in a world with dinosaurs now, which is pretty crazy. So I'm interested in the fact shouldn't how happen. they're going to keep going. It shouldn't be happening. Probably not. We gotta make sure that our worlds are not colliding, yeah. Jerry. Yeah, it's just the way that it works. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's cool that they're coming back. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do with them if they're gonna just gonna be a glorified cameo. But I've never been one for like, hey, the original cast members are coming back. Yeah, that's cool. But yeah, let's integrate them first. Well, I haven't actually seen Gold Blooms wasn't a, a basically a cameo of of sorts. It wasn't. It was. Okay. It was a cameo. It wasn't like a full role that he was like part of the story and and, and like part of it the whole way. He literally had a small role at the start and the end, I believe, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. So, if they expand on that and create more of a story for all of three of them and then plus the new actors yep. like with Chris Pratt and uh is that Bryce Dallas Howard mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. okay, it's hard to believe. Who's the other one that looks exactly like her? Bryce Dallas Howard. I know Jessica exactly. Chastain. Yeah. They look all the same. But Jessica Chastain is in she is a much better actress than Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh yeah, she's probably been given better roles for sure. I, I just think she's no, because you'd think Bryce Dallas Howard would be because it's Ron Howard's daughter. Oh yeah, maybe. Jessica Chastain, man, she's great. Yeah. I really like yeah. she's really great. It should be good. That's dope. Um Again, I still have to see the first one. I've seen parts of the first one. Haven't even seen the second one. Um, um, oh, 
Oh, this is what I was going to bring up. I don't understand this. Why do people feel like they have to press the fucking crosswalk button? Just a after random it's thought. already been pressed. No, I wrote it down this time. They don't know. And you know why it's random? Because you talked about how bikes operate how they want. Yeah. And I can understand the frustration of a bike rider who is like, oh, well, my city's not integrated very well and it's yeah. not bike friendly. I get that. Then you have to be a dick. But what you have to realize is that your bicycle doesn't go 50 kilometers an hour. And that when you're in the middle of traffic on a busy street, you're holding up a lot of people. And guess what? If we're going to play a game of chicken, you're going to lose. And I don't understand why people insist on doing that. I'm a vehicle too. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. We're not operating at the same level. I understand. Like the cities should do a better job of making things bike friendly. But when I was in Calgary and I was riding my bike at 5.30 in the morning, guess what? I did everything in my power to avoid the traffic because if one of them hit me, I'm toast and they're going to have nothing on their windshield. I'm going to be, or maybe myself and my blood. That's about it. I'm finding now that a lot of cyclists, and we know cyclists, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I haven't seen how they operate with traffic, but I'm seeing a lot of cyclists just not giving a fuck. No. Just going wherever they want, and you're holding up traffic. Yep. And you're holding up traffic to a degree that is unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Like, I used to go in between vehicles with my bike just to get the fuck out of the way. Like, I've almost been hit by a train because the C train runs through downtown in Calgary, but guess what? I got the fuck out of the way of the vehicles, got on a sidewalk, and then I was competing with the other pedestrians, Mm -hmm. which is fine because if I run into another pedestrian, there's a very low chance that anything overly, like anything terrible is going to happen to me or that walking pedestrian. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit. It's going to hurt. Yeah, they might get hurt more than me, but if I get hit by a car, I'm dead. Yeah. Or seriously injured. Yeah. Seriously injured. But anyways... This guy on the crosswalk the other day, we can hear it beeping. It's going. Yeah. Let me paint the picture of this guy. He's got tan pants, black shoes, Mm -hmm. a green button up, button down, button down with these black letters or something on it. He's wearing white Oakley sunglasses and he's got a red Ferrari backpack. Real chooch. And he's got his AirPods. What a chooch. And Soph was like, he's like, well, make sure that he's not a fan. I'm like, Soph, barely anybody listens to this show. There's a (laughs) very low chance that this random dude on the fucking corner is listening to us. (laughs) Exactly. And if he is, you know who you are. You don't have to press the crosswalk button when it's already been pressed. There was already four people waiting for the crosswalk to turn. And this guy just walks up, oblivious to anybody else around him, and presses it again. I'm just looking. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Come on, man. What a chooch. Oh, man, it was brutal. And I'm not, I like I said, if you got a Ferrari backpack, that's cool, man. If you got AirPods, that's cool, man. If you got a green shirt with some black shit on it, that's cool, man. Tan pants, cool. Brown shoes, all great. And white Oakleys. But together, it's weird. Huh. And when you operate like that, then your outfit and your actions are just telling me you like to live out loud. And you know yeah. what? If you want to live out loud, I can criticize you out loud as I am right now. It was just really funny. Because I, I have the microphone. You're going to listen to everything I have to say. <laughs> exactly. Which is going to lead us into our next point. Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler looks fucking great. That's wild. I've been okay. I've been hearing about this. I've been seeing the pictures, and I had no idea that there was like a movie with him like that. Apparently, it's already been screened, and it's been getting great reviews. And I think it's coming out December thirteenth. I think that's his only like gritty movie. No, he's had some other ones that are. uh, I wouldn't say gritty, but this one's definitely dark. This one's he's taking a turn. The only one that like kind of breaks the script for him a little bit is Click. Click was actually no, very was, sad. It was sad. Co- but it, it was, was still, comedic. It was still but, very Adam Sandler yeah. though, like the shtick stuff. I would say Spanglish was a big one, which I oh yeah, I can't. I haven't Punch seen Drunk f- Love was also pretty or Funny People. I think it was Funny People. Or I Punch hated Drunk Funny Love. People. You didn't I like Funny hated People. Hated Funny People. I don't know why. That's I just okay. really didn't like it. That's okay. That's okay. Um, and then 
I would say his least Adam Sandler movie, even though it's kind of a mix as his least and his most, because it's my favorite Adam Sandler movie, is The Wedding Singer. Oh, yeah. I, I adore that one. That but anyways, great. this Uncut Gems trailer... Looks great. This movie looks awesome. Like I said, this is it's gonna wild, be, yeah. and I'm like, in a good way. This could possibly do... Not that it, that not that Denzel needed it, but Training Day, what Training Day did with to Denzel's career, at least, sorry, my viewing of Denzel as an actor, because he was already a phenomenal actor at that point. Yeah, but Training Day was raw. Like when you see the good guys go bad, like DiCaprio in uh, Django. Yep, dude, yep. those are great. You need that every so often where they have to play the bad side. This one, not necessarily that he's going to be a bad guy, but he kind of is. But it looks yeah. like he's going to be getting yeah, himself some real shady shit. Yeah. Which is great. Um, no, I'm glad you liked it too. I know you yeah. messaged me after. You're like, dude. I was like, I know. Yeah, I know. Um, Irishman trailer, full trailer. Amazing. The only Amazing. thing I'm concerned about. What's that? The only thing I'm concerned about is that I guess a producer on there or someone involved with it said something about it tackling toxic masculinity. And. I don't think that Scorsese would actually use those words. I don't like hearing the term toxic masculinity. Well, number one, given the era, does it matter? It's supposed to emulate masculinity 100%. I I don't think masculinity. I think what she meant is that it's tackling men's need Mm -hmm. to close themselves off and allowing themselves to be vulnerable with other men in an era that was like, this is how men acted. And I'm thinking what she's using is that anything outside of that is quote unquote toxic. But hey, that's what happens when you have generation after generation of a gender being told you're not supposed to show your emotions. Pretty much. You're supposed to tough it out and move the fuck on. Basically. So if Scorsese tackles it from an introspective way, a level where... It's um, it's these men having kind of internal conflicts for the acts that they're doing. Yeah, that is, that's not toxic masculinity. Yeah. That is just breaking barriers within themselves. I think. Well, we already kind of got that with the Sopranos when you think about it, because one, oh, I mean, like James Gandolfini was a mob boss beyond mob bosses. He was feared by all, revered by all and respected, Mm -hmm. but yet he broke down and he had that fear and anxiety and other health problems. Of course, that's I, I argue that's why the Sopranos was so great. Yeah. So it's like to bring it to light and call it toxic. It's not toxic. That's just how it is. Well, I think the reason, I think the, the, the reason that I reacted to that is because toxic masculinity has turned into such a, a key phrase for people. Well, and let's be honest, a woman reviewing that seems a little bit biased. No, 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 she's not reviewing it. Oh. She's someone actually... She brought, I think she's she's a, a producer on it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but my thing is, I think what she views as toxic masculinity mm. is is actually something more introspective and, and more, more important. Mm-hmm. And I think that that phrase, just for me personally, this could be this could very well be a me problem. Okay, that's why I'm not turning it into a big thing. I just don't like when people use that word. Just like if someone said, "Hey, there's toxic femininity or feminism," it's like, yeah, don't use the phrase. Yeah. Just, just we know there's we we like, we kind of understand that this is how things are, and I might be spinning my wheels and not making sense right now, but there's. And, and this is kind of like a thing of like, oh, I was listening. I was actually listening to something today where it simply said. If you're having trouble finding the words to say something, you don't actually know what you're talking about. But then Possibly. I heard another thing saying that was like, well, no, just some people don't have the vocabulary available to them at the time to explain what they're wanting to explain. Oh, yeah. but anyways, you'll think about it. the thing is you'll I'll remember. It's, you'll remember I'll, later, I'll like, man, I don't know exactly how to say it. I'll have it perfectly <laughs> outlined tonight. Yeah. But anyways, I, I just that was the one thing that kind of was like, eh. But that's also one of those things. It's a phrase used now that's yeah. been thrown around like crazy. Just like the second you hear feminism, people think it's bad. Like automatically. Yeah. Just because you say there's this woman's a feminist, it's not that she's a bad person. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. I think you can use it in bad ways, mm-hmm. but it's not a bad trigger word. Right. And I think I've been kind of when I the more I, that's why I'm phasing myself out of the politics stuff is because I don't like these words actually affecting it. Anyways, the trailer looked great. Yeah. The movie looked great. <laughs> There's that one CGI part with uh, De Niro when he was a soldier. If you freeze frame it, someone freeze framed it. Yeah. It looked kind of Call of Duty. Okay. Like the CG, the, the de-aging didn't look that that good. But yeah. 
It was a trailer. I think with massive actions, I think the the de aging might not be able to catch up with what's going on on the screen. I mean, it's tough, man. I'm still saying Captain Marvel's was outstanding still to this day. Yeah. I haven't seen de aging as good as what they did with Sam Jackson and Phil Coulson. Keep forgetting his real name. Clark Gregg in Captain Marvel. Yeah. Outstanding. Um, El Camino trailer. Amazing. We got, okay, we got a teaser. It was like nothing but everything. The funny thing is, the Emmys. Gave us a teaser. Yes. It was like a... And now we got a full trailer. It was like a minute teaser. And yeah. And this one was a full two and a half minute trailer. And all that was was... Uh, the other one was just basically... Uh, the What the hell was the teaser all about? Can't remember. But anyways, it was really good. Just enough to kind of see what's kind of going on. And it's coming out super fast. I'm going to be in Vegas when it comes out. So I'm choked. I can't oh, see no. it. Day and it's uh, yeah, October 11th, right? Yeah, man. That's cute. Um, Also... It's funny because Ethan had said this to me and I was going to play it off like I didn't go through this. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, man. He's like, I'm such an idiot. He's like, El Camino is the car that he got away with. And for a second, I was going to be like, yeah, no kidding. I'm like, but no, I couldn't do it. I'm like, dude, I, I thought the exact same thing. I think I might have realized it before he texted it to me, but we might have realized it at the same time. I was like, oh, El Camino's the car that he yeah. got away with. Like, the fucking idiot. Like, I'm, look, I'm thinking of myself. Okay, honestly, like, for me, I don't remember the se- the finale very well. So when the first came that was called El Camino, I didn't get it. But as soon as I saw a clip, I'm like, oh, the car. It's the car. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that makes it's sense. A, that's why I think it took him that time and me. It's just funny that it's... It, Who's the guy that he talked to at the end when he says, are you ready? He's like, yeah. I, I don't know. Apparently, okay, to. I think it's who uh, Jimmy had set him up with originally to get out. The guy that does the uh, escaping, like yes, not the escape. Because remember, like, uh, he, he bailed on it. Yeah, he yeah. he bailed on him, right? I so, didn't see any uh, vacuums in the back. Yeah, whatever. But I yeah, I don't know if he I don't know if he went to his shop. So yeah, it could be that vacuum guy. So yeah, uh, he's the it, guy that uh, yeah he got rid. He he makes people disappear. Yeah, well not, he made he made Walter protection. White basically. Yeah, exactly. So not he yeah he erased them and all that stuff, and he ended up coming back. Whatever. Did he send him to North Dakota? Is that where he sent them? Yeah, somewhere north. He was but anyways, so close to us. But Walter uh, visit Saskatchewan. Yeah, you see him. That's gonna be so good. I think. Like hey, the man, fact man. that it's only a movie, yeah, kind of sucks. No, I'm stoked. That's perfect. But yeah, maybe it's good. I'm otherwise, excited. otherwise, a mini series would be the only thing worth it in the sense of like we're talking six episodes. He's on the run though. That's the thing. So how long are you going to carry on this on the run thing? Yeah, that's the problem with Prison Break. Prison Break milked their very theme way too much. I think they the could have like, left and the they could have stopped at like season two. Oh, it would have been a great two season run, and that's for it. sure. The other thing too is the more like. When you think about it, mm-hmm. um, Jesse Pinkman's, Pinkman's character was supposed to die at the end of season one. Oh, yeah. That's what's so crazy about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then you're looking at it and you're like, fucking Jesse, man. Now you got your own movie. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I know for a fact, not for a fact. I can't say this for a fact. But Walter White is dead. There's been some things like, is Walter alive? Yeah, no. Listen, he it wouldn't be alive because I actually just want it to be. Or sorry, he better be dead. Oh, okay, sorry. I was going to say, like, for, excuse me. <laughs> thanks for giving me the look to stop. Um, because this is Jesse's movie. Yeah. I think, like, it, it'll this be is a like, way to conclude yeah. Jesse's story. If that's Because in the trailer you saw, like, he it's uh, he had uh, the picture of Andrea. Yeah. Andrea and the little, and the little kid. See, the hard part is, who's he going to, like, I don't know if he's just using them as motivation because everybody else is dead that causes it to him. Well, yeah. You know, basically and pretty much everybody else is dead that could be a part of it well there's potential i don't know if there's rumor or speculation that uh saul goodman so uh whatever his character is you think he's gonna run you think bob odenkirk's gonna run into him yeah that's okay the battery's dead yeah so uh, that's gonna run into each that's other? a potential one that's a potential that he might be involved and actually i'm very behind on better call saul and i kind of want to that show's great. I kind of want to keep. I, I like. I'm, I can't remember. I'm a season or two behind. They could have it converge. Yeah, in its own way, or the fact that he just shows up in that season, whatever. Because mm-hmm. I don't know where he's at at this point. Again, Better Call Saul is a prequel, and during the yeah. events, I believe. So, um, last thing. It's a big one. Ooh! All the Star Wars news in the world's been coming out in the last 24 hours. That's wild. Um, Bob Iger wrote a book. And Bob Iger, for being the head of Disney, sure just lives in an island on himself because he pretty much said that he met with George Lucas and George Lucas had ideas for the Star Wars movies going forward. Bob Iger said, okay, and just scrapped it all. And so George Lucas is feeling pretty betrayed. But to put it in your book, he wrote this stuff in his book. Mm -hmm. 
and he just doesn't give a fuck. And like, there's all this shit going on where like Kevin Feige might be running Star Wars now, which means that there's issues with Kathleen Kennedy, which Kathleen Kennedy was the one kind of a liaison to George Lucas in yeah. Lucas films yeah. when they bought when Disney bought them. Yeah. Uh, she's apparently getting the fuck out or there's rumors of that. They're pushing her out. Maybe the Kevin Feige thing. Well, because everything under her lately has not been going very well, but Bob Iger has even said he feels that they've rolled out star Wars too fast. Well, no shit, dude. Yeah. But then look at the Marvel gauntlet, how that kind of came about. That was a year after year. You had something and it was solid, but, but they weren't enough. By the time that they were rolling everything out every year, yeah. we were leading towards something. Yeah. Whereas Star Wars came out of the gate, we don't just have The Force Awakens. We have everything. Oh, they showed their hand, basically. That's right what I think. Get-go. They went hmm. Rogue One. They were going with this. They rushed um, Solo. Solo. Their, the Last Jedi didn't go very well. The new the Rise of Skywalker may or may not be going well. So now they're thinking of putting Kevin Feige in there, which I think that's just a rumor. I don't think he'd do it. And then... They also talked about Brie Larson joining Star Wars, like heading the next trilogy, like putting her front and center to lead the next trilogy. And maybe that's because of the backlash she's gotten for being Captain Marvel and how nobody wants her to lead the Avengers. <laughs> um, yeah, I've said this before on the show. Brie Larson is a good actress. Just go watch The Room with her and J- uh, Jacob Tremblay. Yeah. That is an outstanding performance. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't like what she was doing with Marvel and how she was using Marvel to create this own yeah. campaign for herself. And then the movie was terrible. And it was this whole thing of just let's rewrite history so that she's the most important person in the world. Yeah. And yeah, anyways. So they're looking at putting her in Star Wars and then supposedly Chris Evans also wants to throw his hat into Star Wars. Well, that's fucking stupid. Like, mm. I get it when you grow up, everyone says, oh, Star Wars was such an inspiration. I don't think it's like that for all actors. But you don't think he, it's a good idea to put him in there? No, fuck. He's Captain America at this point. If you want to put, like, now it just seems like, oh, Kevin Feige's doing it. Kevin Feige's my friend. If Kevin Feige's doing it, then Brie Larson, who Kevin Feige worships the ground she walks on for some reason. Um, if he's doing it, then I can go in it because Fran- uh, Star Wars is a big franchise and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, dude. Pick something else. Mm-hmm. You didn't even want to do. You weren't even wanting to do Captain America to begin with, and then you were saying you were going to take a break for a while. Yeah. And now you want to get into a Star Wars film because Kevin Feige's in charge. I get it. We can all bow down to Feige for the fact that he like created the MCU. Yeah. And not basically, he created the MCU and took it as far with his vision and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a good idea for him to tackle Star Wars because I don't think we need more Star Wars in our lives. You know what? And if, I don't think the MCU characters need to transfer over to do Star Wars movies now. Yeah. Because then it's just going to be this in, incest-filled pool that Disney is putting together where all of their characters from other franchises are going into other ones. Yeah. And it's like, all right, why don't you just add something a little bit extra? <laughs> but I understand that the, the headline, Brie Larson and Chris Evans to star in new Star Wars film, is a sounds big pretty deal. good, yeah. It's it's a big deal. Right? Mm-hmm. Anyways, it, there's a lot of Star Wars shit going on, and none of it sounds very promising for Star Wars fans. And the only thing I don't know who's gonna be at the helm of it. And Bob Iger's a fucking idiot, even though for being the CEO of Disney, like, and a bit of a dick for what he did to George Lucas. If that, if all of, if what he wrote in his book, which I've read the th- quote. And what he said, because George Lucas wanted to put stuff like in, like he wanted to double down on the Metaclorians, which isn't a good idea. No, um, but he wanted to flesh it out. But Bob Iger, again, like I said, like like I said, like I heard, like I've read, he just said, and he said, he quote in his book that he's just like told him yes and did something else entirely. All right, it's a dick move, a little bit, a little bit. But anyways, oh, you're gonna sneeze. Are we gonna get it? Need it. Do it. Do it. Just knock into the microphone. It's not going to happen anyways. Oh, damn. So close. Anyways, the thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> no, on, honestly, like, I'd be I'd be pretty excited for some decent... Listen, as long as the material's good and it's worth it, if we get a series of Rogue One-esque type of things... That Raw is really good. 
Tell me you wouldn't be excited for that. Oh, well, they are doing... Um, doing the Mandalorian alone yeah, looks no. amazing. Because it's, it's not just movies. It's also TV series are involved in that, right? For sure. So, the, are you bringing up the whole thing? Well, let me, let me, let me read yeah. this for you. So I read um, it, but you can read it for yeah, the fans. Did I send it to you? you so this it was part of the link. Insider. Yeah. Seven confirmed Star Wars projects are coming after the rise of Skywalker. Right. And when he says, I think we rolled it out too fast, you guys are still going. And so... Somewhere we the already knew about. Looks amazing. We already knew about that. I'm actually excited for the Cassian Andor Rogue One spinoff series. I'm very su- was that one. Good. I'm surprised at most than anything. I'm surprised there's more of a story for him. But hey, whatever. The They're clone- basically like he's the pre Han Solo guy, basically. I guess in a way. Um, the Clone Wars they've been going. That's fine. Okay, Clone Wars. Movie. I heard the, the animated series is apparently very good. I've heard it's outstanding. So yeah, and it's on Netflix. Yeah. Um, an Obi Wan Kenobi series. Amazing. It's a lot. David Benioff and DBY series of films. Oh, nobody knows who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Ryan Johnson film trilogy. So they said that he's not doing it, but now it's come back that he's actually going to do it, and he's collaborating with the Game of Thrones guys, which for people that hate Game of Thrones last season and D- last Jedi. <laughs> and D&D and The Last Jedi, it's like the worst combination for them. Yeah, they're going to have a little PXDSD and on that. And then Kevin Feige's movie. So... Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige is developing a Star Wars movie with Lucasfilm president yeah. Kathleen Kennedy. So together. So I don't believe the rumors that are saying that Kathleen Kennedy is out, though. No. Based on that. Uh, and But also, I don't know how, con- like, I don't know. I don't know how rock solid it is. Yeah. But they did confirm it on The Hollywood Reporter. Excited about the project. I'm just excited if there's, like, older public stuff. There's a lot of history that they can touch on. And if they do a good job of it, then it's worth it. Well, I can see Kevin Feige going older public, and I think people will like it. Yeah, but I but don't that know. that deserves that deserves more than a movie to be honest. Feige should do a one off, uh, for sure. But if you're talking like the Ryan Johnson and DB and DD, Boys. whatever the hell is, whatever. If they have, well, the thing is, they have the old those Republic. those guys have the tools to potentially uh, work with the older public material. And again, we agree they do well when they also have all they the have material. The yep. Going on, the, going on their own, not so well. Let's be honest on that. Mm-hmm. The Star Wars is already written. The canon is in. There's so much of it. So yeah. realistically, I think it, it should be... No, I'm not going to call it a slam dunk. I'm just saying it should be along the lines of what we got with like Game of Thrones first six seasons. Listen, I'll tell you this. If in season... If after the Battle of the Bastards, the day after the Battle of the Bastards, someone said that these guys are doing a Star Wars thing. Yeah. Which I think they did before the last season came out. So everyone was excited. Potentially, yeah. But if they said that and Ryan Johnson, so before Last Jedi, yeah, and these guys, it's like, yes, right? You definitely lose that trust in them, for sure. When when you you see what they did with what... You I, loved. I, I think what you lose is, trust. I think what it is is that Ryan Johnson wanted to subvert expectations and failed. Yeah, and I think that those guys also wanted to subvert yeah. expectations and they failed, and they did it in yeah. the most lazy way possible. So people are like, "Oh, so you guys are the guys that take whatever material you're given, and if you even sense that people are going for it, you're going to go out of your way to subvert expectations." Yeah. However, you're not, you're not creative enough. Mm-hmm. To subvert expectations in a way that is actually enjoyable mm-hmm. because you guys just don't have that talent. Your guys' tagline for all of season eight and every single one of those behind the scenes videos was, well, we wanted to subvert expectations. We wanted to subvert expectations. It's like, dude, don't you failed. Just go <laughs> with your story that you created. Don't yeah. subvert expectations based on the like the, yeah. the theories that were going around. Like, there's nothing wrong with fan service. Honestly. If it's done effectively true true fans aren't going to be butthurt about a little bit of leaks here and there about the information they want to see the finished product i'm that i'm one of those people too i don't normally care for spoilers there's a few that i'm like okay i don't want to hear anymore like avengers endgame we got way mm-hmm. too many trailers behind it right a lot of it threw us off a lot of it was for nothing but ultimately i'm like i just couldn't see past a certain point and that was like okay i had a breaking point i saw what i saw up to a certain point and that's it but most people don't care if they catch a spoiler here and there, especially for a, a minimal thing like, uh, okay, John's going to ride a dragon. Yeah, we fucking know it. We don't need to see it either. I, I, I want, sorry, we don't need to hear about it before. I want to see it. Even if I do, I'm going to I'm gonna hear it. So, 
I'm probably not making sense now, but that's okay. No, it's, it's making sense. That's fine. But anyways, yeah, I'm not a care. I don't care about spoilers. So you don't need to go the route of subverting the ex- people's expectations and ruining no, your just, product and what you had. Because again, rumor you talking about it, or a friend of ours was talking about it, and he said like what they had originally was a masterpiece and could have been amazing. And when they I fucking heard it. that leak. I was like, holy shit! Yeah, that was great. So I don't know. Whatever yeah. it is, what it is. We'll see what happens. We'll have more yeah. information. I'm we'll going to try to be optimistic about it, and I think they again with the material that's given to them, and again, it's going to be a lot easier for them to create a, a more beefy story. Again, the even the games, which then draw from the books and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I, I'm just um, I don't know. I I just don't. Uh, I, what I I don't. I really don't care at the end of the day. Yeah. What yeah, I you're never really excited happen. for about the Star Wars stuff anyway. No. What I Were you excited for Force Awakens? Yeah. But yeah, beyond was, that, you're like, whatever. Yeah, after that, I was just like, this is fine. And then now there's like, there's so much of them. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. Yeah. What I don't want. So this is the issue I had with the. Um, I, I don't want what's, what happened at, like with Marvel and Brie Larson. For instance, yeah. bring, like her, that's my only concern with that is that she's gonna, she either learned from the way that she was operating with Marvel and not do it and just bring her legitimate acting chops to the role and make it good. Yeah. Or she's gonna, they're gonna turn this into this campaign for this, this person just to take over and do what, it, do and say whatever she wants in the name of whatever cause she's feeling is right at the time. And, Make the whole thing about her, yeah. Because I, my problem is, it wasn't a cap about Captain Marvel the character. All she did was try to make it as much about her as possible yeah. and her cause. And it's like, don't do that because mm-hmm. that's not what we're here for. Yeah. But, anyways, we'll see what happens. A lot of news there for Star Wars stuff. Mm-hmm. We actually ended up covering an hour and a half easily. Look at that, just the two of us yeah. with uh, with your sniffle. Just on uh, speaking of Star Wars, I'm really excited about. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order dude. looks amazing. Dude. It brings me back to the Force Unleashed. Yeah, man. I love that gaming style. I never cared for the MMO that they did with nope. uh, with the Old Republic or some of the other games. See, I was a huge fan. I can't. I never got into WoW either, and I really hated mm. it because of that. This guy. I like what they did with the Fallen Order. It looks amazing. The trailers of gameplay alone and the moves he can do. Awesome. And it looks like it's going to be very God of War 4-esque. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which I'm totally fine with. Not the gameplay-wise, but it's definitely... Mm. Mm, it's behind him a lot more. No, okay, sorry. It's more AC, right. AC Odyssey. Sure, around those lines, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, you're you're probably right on that one. Either way, it looks no. really good. I'm a huge fan of Cameron Monaghan. I think he's great. Um, I think, yeah, I think it looks really good. Yeah. And I think that's the one they don't have any multiplayer, so we shouldn't have any it's microtransaction BS, which apparently Mario Kart Tour for the mobile is yeah. like getting raked over the fucking coals because yep. their microtransactions are actually the lowest. Like, And by lowest, I mean like it's a low point for gaming. Yeah. That game alone. So it's yikes. not worth it. I'll play my original N64. Thank you very much. Exactly. All right. Or even the new ones are pretty fun. The new ones are fun? The Switch? What else you got? I got just a mini close review of a new series on Amazon, uh, Carnival Row. Go for it. With Orlando Bloom and Cara Delevingne. And now, I never cared for Cara Delevingne only because of what she did in Suicide Squad. That, to me, like resonated. I'm like, she looks ridiculous, number one. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't like Suicide Squad to She's begin with. She's amazing in interviews, though. She's Is she? She's such a great person. So I haven't, I haven't seen much of her stuff at all. I only have her in Suicide Squad, and that's it. And it's a very bad thing. But in this, she does a very good job. And Orlando Bloom's great. I always like what he does. Um, but it's Victorian era fantasy world. So it's basically like a grittier Narnia going on with like, you have the pixies, which are like the fairies. Uh, pucks, which are like centaurs slash, it's not centaurs per se. There are centaurs in the world, but these pucks are basically like goat men. I don't know what the fuck they are. But anyways, yeah. And... It's a crime drama, like it's it's got a deep lore behind it. Everything, it's I like it quite a bit. I always like period pieces of Victorian era is nice, and then you add the fantasy into that. It's pretty sweet, so it's definitely worth a watch. I binged it in two days, so it's definitely worth a watch on Amazon. Sweet, yeah, 
And I started Jack Ryan today too, oh. which is very good. On the street or on TV? Amazon. Oh. Yeah. They finished A Quiet Place. So oh, yeah, the second one. The second one they finished mm-hmm. shooting. They wrapped. And that's a wrap on this episode of uh, yeah. The F Word. Thanks so much for everybody who's uh, tuned in. Uh, for even the very few of you, even the one of you, whoever it is, um, I will. I'm just thankful that at least one other person is listening to this other than myself when I do the editing. And if uh, you do enjoy it and it is something that you do like to recommend or would like to recommend to people, share with your friends. Um, let us know how you're enjoying the show. You can email us at the effort podcast at gmail.com. You can also still email any reviews you have, whether it's music, TV, video games, movies, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, with Joker around the corner, I'd love to get your Joker reviews when it comes out. Cause I'm going to see it on the Saturday. Just no spoilers, please. You can find me on Twitter at the F G. You can, um, what did I say? I already email us at the effort podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at the F word podcast and then on Facebook at the same name. Um, and then wherever you're listening from, whether it's from Spotify to Stitcher and everywhere in between, uh, just, you know, shoot us a like, give us a review. That'd be really awesome. Even like Apple podcast, I hear is the best one to do. So if you are using Apple and you do feel like leaving us a review, that would be very, very much appreciated. Um, and again, we just appreciate you guys tuning in every week. However many of you there are, that's it. Oh, no, that's it. I'm G. I'm Vass. And we are... Out. Oot. Oot.